Hey guys, Lion here. I've been asked recently on stream to do a video about vassals. Uh, what they are for, what they do, and most especially how to get them. Of course, all of the information I'm going to give you will not require any exploit. It is as, you know, as the base game want you to get them. So no exploit, no everything. Now, the first thing we need to say about vassals is that every time you start a game, the major faction will always have the same amount of vassals and their clans will always be the same. So you can kind of figure out already which are the best clans and which are really not. So for example, if you go to the Southern Empire, in every one of my run, every time I get to the Southern Empire, there are two clans that are really, really, really powerful. And that's this clan, the Leonipardes, and this clan, the Julios. They start, you know, the Julios clan starts pretty small, but then they get big later. And the Ongoros is another clan, the Ongoros actually, is another clan that is pretty damn good when it comes to the Southern Empire. And you can find these in basically any other culture. There is another thing that we need to keep in mind. We talk about clans, clan tiers, and uh, uh, the starting clans. There is another thing that you need to keep in mind, that's rebellions. Because rebellions can happen at any point if the town has less than 25 prosperity and the militia of the town is stronger than the garrison. At that point, re a rebellion can happen. And a new rebel clan will be spawned and they will be basically their job is defending the town from the faction they just rebelled against. If, for an example, if Sionan were was to be taken by the Sergians and then rebelled, the new clan in Sionan, which is probably going to be called the Sionan's rebels, is going to fight and defend against Sergia. Now, if they successfully defend against Sergia for more than around 30 days or so, then that clan will automatically join the Batanians. If the Batanians are available, in the sense that they are a faction that is capable of getting a new clan in. In that way, that way strengthening the Batanians. Now, the, the Rebellion feature is a very cool feature that has been in the game for quite a few months now. And it works really well. A thing to notice about Rebelled Clan is that they will always start a clan tier 3. And they will always start with 3 members. So not the best clans, but they should be cheap. Let's just put it like that. So, uh, let's dive more into clan tiers, for example. I talk about clan tiers here, I picked the Flandians, right? But I didn't really dive too much into that. So, clan tiers are important for two reasons. Well, the higher the clan tier, the more units a party of that clan can recruit. Meaning that you will always... You know, you will, you will not be surprised if any member of this clan, which, by the way, from clan tier 4 to clan tier 6, the maximum number of parties a, a clan can have is 4. There is one perk in leadership that I'm going to show you right now that is able to give an extra party, but that's very unlikely for the AI to achieve it. But for the player, as you can see, is Talent Magnet. Talent Magnet is, if you're building a guy with great social, it's one of the best perks to get to. Because it doesn't only give you free focuses for your characters, companions, governors, whatever you're using them. It gives you a fifth party, and that really is something. Now, the AI will more likely than not never get to 250 leadership by simply the rules of how the game is set right now. It will basically never get there. But it's good to keep in mind that there are always going to be four parties at all time from a clan on the field. Meaning that, simply, if they are third, uh, Philorina, Alari and Alice are the are the parties available, then Romond, Morkun, Amorkun and Erdurand are sitting in towns. Meaning that they are ready, you know, of course they are going to govern the places that are under the under the 
the clan control, so Galen, Sargut, and Talivel, they're gonna do governor duties here. But if needed, because, well, let's say the earth had got captured by the Batanians, right? Then let's say Romund is gonna take his place on the field, and then Dirt Earth is gonna chill around until he gets free. If he gets free, he's gonna go back into the reserves, the reserves, and he's gonna more than likely govern one of those places until someone else gets captured then their third will be sent out because the clan leader will always be sent out if available keep that in mind another thing about clan tier is that every tier will give you 25 more units compared to the other ones i think we already talked about this one a thing to keep in mind when you are in a late game you it's gonna be very unlikely to recruit a clan that is not at least clan tier 3 but keep in mind that a clan tier 3 can only field three parties you need to wait until clan tier 4 to be able to to be able to have that clan with an, an additional fourth party keep that in mind now the thing that many people don't value when looking for clans is um, their active members People just say, well, this clan, you know, is cheap and so on, but let's say, let's make a bad clan, right? So, to give you an example, guys, I've came here to the Crusade because some of the clans are really not worth getting, um, especially early on. Because, for example, the Yansri clan, you may think, well, it's a low tier clan, they only own a castle, maybe they are very cheap. And probably they are, but keep in mind that these guys, they only have three members. Meaning that if something was to happen to any of their clan of their party leaders, they can't really field someone else. They, they will basically lose all of their strength on the map. While if you go and pick another clan, like for example the Tigri clan, which starts with five members, it's gonna be, well, they're gonna be way stronger on the map because they can lose one member for free, for example. They can lose uh, any member and another one will be will be set on the field. And, uh, you know, my rule of thumb usually is you need to have at least four active members and those four active members needs to be possibly below 50. So. Let's say we want to go and find a Melody, right? Let's go and want to go and find Melody. So the first thing you need to need to know about vessels, you know, the first thing when you selected your vessel that you need to know is that they have a sort of price tag. And this price tag is anywhere between 55,000 to 2 million gold. That's anywhere between that. Um, there are some clans that will simply not even give you know they will simply say no to you they don't want to join um but this is why i spawned this guy in with 101 millions is because i want to i want to show this to you uh you need to have enough gold to recruit them or else they will simply s tell you to fuck off because you will very clearly not give them what they're looking for so that we have this character I'm gonna show you that not all clans, despite the money you have, can be recruited. And I call I call I call those clans loyalists. Now a thing that you need to know about loyalist clans is that the, the their loyalty can change over time. Some clans that are really loyal will uh, and can can or will end up one day leaving the kingdom. So that's something that you need to consider. So let's let's give you the example. And while I give you the example, I'm gonna give you a simple trick that is gonna save you a lot of time. So I came in here. This is Siren here in the Southern Empire, and we're talking. We're going to talk about Valaria. Valaria is a member of the Julius clan, and she is the wife. She is the wife of Baranor. This is not really important. The only thing that matters is that she is a member of Baranor's clan. Now, if you go and talk to her, select what you want that you need to select. There is something I'd like to discuss. And then you say, what do you think about your league? Now, you know this character has 100 million gold, right? You may say, well, Lion, you just said that like 
clans will always ask, will more likely than not ask between 55,000 and 2 millions. Exactly. This is one of the loyalist clans, for example. They are doing so well in the Southern Empire that they have no business living. Either that, or they are very loyal to their king, and they just don't live. So, for example, you may say, well, Lion, but are you sure that's correct? Because this is, she, you know, she is not the clan leader, and she's telling you that they have no interest joining your clan. Let me show you that I'm not wrong. So, guys, now we are here, talking to Barnor, and let's do the same thing. So, what do you think, Baronor? Do you like Ragia? Yes, he likes Ragia. And this goes to show that you don't need to specifically find the leader in order to see if the clan is interested to join. And also, some clans will just simply not join you. So you need to find the right one. So Baronor, for example, and the Julius clan, they don't care. Now, I went back in here. I look for the Batanians, right? I'm looking for a clan to hire, I'm looking for someone. And I've been fighting the Batanians, I've been gaining some some territories from there, and there is this clan that I'm really interested in, right? You know, the Fenuvain from, you know, led by Melidir. So where is Melidir? He's in Aster Castle, okay. Actually, let's not go to Melidir, let's go to Tegan. He's in Carbanshad. So now that we arrived, now that we arrived at Carbanshad, all we need to do is just go in the town, approach the gates and nail the guard, request a meeting, and unfortunately the guy we are looking for is not here, but another member of the clan we are looking for is here, and that member is Alcia. So we can click on her and talk to her from uh, outside the walls. And we are going to ask the same thing that we asked to the other lady from the Southern Empire, and she is going to say this phrase, that means that this clan is interested in joining. You should discuss the issue with my husband Melidir, who speaks for our family. So now we just need to find Melidir, which is in Aster Castle. And now we found Melidir. Now that we found Melidir, boys, we can... Uh... Actually, I mean, I got caught by Melidir, <laughs> funny enough. We can talk to him, though. Even if you get caught, you can talk to him. And I'm just going to say that his league is not worth his, of his loyalty. And he's going to accept. And now we have these checks. As you can see, the checks are pretty bad. But we're not going to do the checks just yet. But this is goes to show that you don't need to find a leader to find out what clan is willing to join you. So we are here with Malidir once again. And we're going to try and persuade him. And I have nothing, nothing at all of what is going to make him join us. So, our relation with Melidir has went down to minus 97. Now, I know it's not 100, but I mean, it's going to do, right? It's going to show you what's, what really does input. So, let's try and talk to him. We know this clan wants to join us, so let's see. The first check is a 5%. Is a 14% chance of failing. And a 5% chance of succeeding. And of course we are failing. What well, about the second one? The second one is a 71%. This is pretty high to be fair. We failed that anyway. It doesn't matter. The, third, the, the, the next one is an 81%. That's also very high. It's a very high one. And the last one is a 56%. So, as you can see, those checks were not too bad, but the first one being a 5% and all of those checks with no double persuasion meant that the chance of getting Malidir was quite slim. So, here we are guys, once again, with Malidir, and we have no perks, and no relations, he doesn't hate us, but he doesn't like us either, so let's see what happens. Do you remember the first check was a 5% last time? What about this time? It's a 35%. The chance of failure is still the same, but it's a 35 instead of a 5%. We're going to fail it. It's okay. The second, the second check is the same. It's a 71. Now we are going to succeed. Great. 
The next one is a 56. So this one, this one went down. Keep that in mind, guys. This one went down because it is not, it doesn't fear us. Because this check is like one that requires him to fear us, and it doesn't. So it's a 56 instead of an 81, remember. And the last one is still a 56 one. Now, we're going to fail with Balladeer. As you can see, the chance of getting Balladeer is quite slim again. Okay, guys, we are here with Balladeer once again. And this time, I'm not going to use any perks, but we're going to have 100 relations. As you can see, we have plus 99 in relation with Balladeer this time. Will this make any change? And this is the first check. It's a 77 double persuasion. The weird. Now let's go forward. We have another 77 single. That we're going to eat. We have a 60% single that we're also going to eat. So as you can see, the chance of getting Malidir by only having relations with him and no perks is actually quite high. And how much is he going to ask? As we know, his clan is quite powerful as average wealth. He has a lot of members, he's a clan tier 4, he owns a town and the castle. How much is it going to work? 747,000. This means that to get this guy, you will need to have around a million in your pockets. And then you can ask this guy. You can ask this guy to join your clan, you can try to persuade him. So, we're accepting the offer and Melody is going to join our service. So boys, we're here with Melody once again and... This time we're going to use one perk and our relation will be set to neutral with him. And let's see what kind of perks we are adding. We are adding having going. 75 athletics perk. It's a perk that you can get fairly easy in the early game. And this is usually the perk I kind of strive forward and trying to achieve in a fast way to get my character married. Because this will make your life so much easier. So much easier when it comes to persuasion. And the description here is slightly increases your persuasion chance. Well, don't, don't trust it because it's not slightly. It's a 30% increase. So we're going to ask the same thing. And as you can see, it's going up to 46. I think it was around 35 when we had nothing at all. And we succeed. Okay, what about the second one? We went to 92. So that's also quite an improvement. It's basically almost infallible. I don't know if that was the right word, but I'm going to use it anyway. Now, the next one, the third one, is a 72. So also a pretty high one. Not the highest. There is a, one, a chance in fall that you're going to miss. Um, and the next one is still a 72. And unfortunately, we fell into the ineffective. But don't worry, because there are ways you can gain an even more efficient persuasion. So guys, we are, we are we are here with Malidir once again, and I added one other perk, which is Meaningful Favors. Now, I plan to use this perk by itself and combine with having going, but during during the recording, I realized that Malidir unfortunately doesn't have a double persuasion check if you're not friends with, the, with him. So we're using basically the best possible situation you can find yourself in when recruiting a vassal, which is having the perk, the athletics perk having going, the charm perk, uh, meaningful favors, also I charm, which is, you know, yeah, I am, yeah, yeah, you can get. And also we have good relation with him. As you can see, he loves us, he's plus 99. So how is this going to affect Melody's opinion of us? The first one is a 100% double, per double persuasion. There is no chance to fail that, the 100%. What about the second one? It's a 98. There is a chance to fail that, but it's very unlikely. What about the, the third one? Which I'm going to fail on purpose, if I can. I try to get the 49. There you go, ineffective. Let's see the last check. The last check is a 77 that we get. So remember when we got Melidir a couple of attempts ago? It was 747,000. So does the relation really influence much? Well, 
It's still the same price, because if I remember correctly, we did get him with full relations. But as you can see, his price tag is still the same. And I can assure you that the price tag doesn't really impact too much when it comes to here. So should you care about relations when recruiting lords? Well, yeah, because having relation with them and nothing else is already good enough. Uh, will already give you a very good chance to get them. Now, I really suggest to get the perks, but at the same time, should you gain a relation for the simple reason of lowering the price of the vessel? Probably not. It's probably not worth your time. But relation is indeed important. You want your relation to be I with the clans you are interested with. And there you go, my little joints. So what did we learn about clans, guys? What did we learn about clans? We learned that clan tier is important. We learned that active members are important. We learned that there are a few perks that can help you out. And those perks are having going in the athletics and meaningful favors in charm. You can also get for, for uh, forgivable grievances, to be fair. Um, it does a similar, uh, it does basically the similar, a similar thing, but to be fair, I prefer meaningful favors, just optimizing that success chance. And I don't think any other perk that is worth getting exists um, in here. And if you can, why not? Just release them from a battle, just donate prisoners to them while uh, you are a merc, while you are a vassal. Increase their relations with them, free them from the prisons uh, from the prisons if you want to stage a prison break. There are many ways you can increase relation with vassals. And just remember, try to not chop heads off unless you want to chop all of them. <laughs> anyway guys, I hope this video was informative. I hope it's going to be good. And I will see you again hopefully during my next stream. I always stream from 10 a.m. Central European time every day of the week apart from Sunday. I will see you there boys. Goodbye.